Hello, and welcome to episode 59 of the Victorian Studio Podcast. My name is Maureen, and I'm coming to you from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, on Sunday, March the 5th, 2017. Welcome, as always, to all new and returning viewers. I really do appreciate you spending some of your time with me today in my studio. Uh, I hope you enjoy seeing what I have to share. I have some knitting, a little bit of spinning, and some other crafting to show you today. Well, the Harry Potter cow has been going great guns over on the Ravelry group. Frankly, I had no idea it would be so popular. We have over 900 posts in the thread, and uh, it's just been wonderful to see everybody's participation and support and uh, chatter over there. So thank you everyone who has participated so far in the Knit Along. It's been wonderful. I also wanted to announce that uh, Vani, Studio Vaughn Design over on Ravelry, has graciously accepted my invitation to become a moderator of the Victorian Studio podcast group. So thank you so much, Vani. Um, she has been so active, especially in the Harry Potter Cal thread and has been a great supporter of everyone's projects and posts and questions. I really do appreciate it. And I thought I wanted to formally acknowledge all of her work and participation um, and make her um, an official moderator of the group. So welcome to that position, Bonnie. Thank you so much for all your help. And thank you for accepting my invitation to become a moderator. I really do appreciate it. And I'm very excited to have you as a moderator of my group. So as I said, the Harry Potter Cal has been so very busy. Um, and what I did before I started recording today is I went over to random.org uh, to choose three winners of prizes today. So that will be from everyone who's participated in the thread from January the 1st to February the 28th. So what I did was I popped in the numbers 2 to 869 into random.org to draw for three uh, prizes today. And the first prize, I first wanted to thank the generous donation from Kelly June. She was a previous winner uh, of the cowl and she wanted to pay it forward by donating our Ravelry pattern as well. So thank you so much, Kelly June, for your generosity. It's wonderful. So uh, I thought we would draw for that winner first. So again, uh, from the random.org um, numbers 2 to 869, the first uh, number it drew was number post number 801, LDS Venus. Congratulations, you've won the $10 US or less Ravelry pattern donated by Kelly June. So if you wouldn't mind, please PMing me on Ravelry and I'll get you in touch with Kelly June and you can choose what pattern she, you would like her to gift to you. So congrats. And again, thank you so much, Kelly June. The second prize that I wanted to draw for today was a ten dollar uh, giftable Ravelry pattern from me. From me. So uh, again, I went into random.org, and the winner is post number three ninety seven, Caspar Clark. So again, congratulations! If you'd like to PM me on Ravelry and let me know what pattern you'd like me to gift to you, um, I'll do that as soon as I see your uh, message. So congrats. And I thought also I would like to um, give away one of the sets of Harry Potter stitch markers. So here's a picture of it here. And the winner for this, random.org, chose post number 499, Jay Synth. So congratulations, Jay Synth. Uh, you are the winner of the stitch markers. So please get a hold of me when you see this and I'll get your address to send those out to you. So congratulations, all three winners. Uh, next episode, I'll also do another drawing. And uh, at the end of this month, we'll do some larger uh, drawings for the bags and more stitch markers and other prizes. So that will be very exciting. So again, thank you so much to everyone who's been participating in the Harry Potter Knit Along. It's been such a wonderful time seeing everybody's beautiful um, projects 
and yarns and um, participation. It's just been great. So thank you all. Okay, so let's get to what I've been up to over the last couple of weeks knitting wise. Um, I only have three projects on the go right now. Uh, two you've seen before and one I just started on March the 1st. So I'll start with the uh, ones you've seen already and uh, I was hoping to get a lot more done but um, this week, uh, this past two weeks at work it's been um, pretty busy. I've even been working through my lunch hours so usually um, I take some of my knitting to work um, so that I can get some done during my lunch hours but that just hasn't been possible um, these last couple of weeks I've been redesigning our uh, cardiology department's website and so it seems like I get on a roll when you're coding and it's kind of hard to stop so I've been basically just been working through my lunch hours and eating as I'm doing that and not being able to uh, put that down to pick up the knitting needles so I haven't got as much knitting to show you as in previous episodes but I did get a little bit done so the first project that I wanted to share with you today um, are some socks and uh, these ones are the Snape's stockings by Erica Luter at Dreams and Fiber. Here's a color picture again of these and as I mentioned on the last episode I was so very lucky to have received some yarn from Sunshine Yarns, Danny, over on Sunshine Yarns and as it turns out it's the same yarn that Erica used when she made her first um, her first pattern. So um, this is perfect. So this is the Snape colorway by Sunshine Yarns and it's beautiful blacks, blues, greens and greys. So perfect for Severus Snape. Let's see if I can find the, um, the card for Sunshine Yarns. Danny was so very nice um, to have donated uh, this yarn to the podcast for the Harry Potter cow. So this is her card and um, this is on her classic sock base and it's 100% superwash merino and in the colorway Snape. So um, as you've seen if you've been here before I always do my socks uh, concurrently and I believe last time I may have shown, I can't remember now, that I had done the cuffs on both of them. But since then I've been working on one. And so far I've gone through Erica's pattern uh, just the once through. So um, that's how far down one set of pattern um, instructions she has. And if you notice I've got lots of stitch markers on here. Um, with this lace pattern, I wanted to make sure that um, I wasn't missing any um, any of the patterns. So I found it very easy to put a stitch marker at the end of each pattern repeat throughout the row, and it really keeps me on track. So I really love the way this is almost turning out like a basket weave um, pattern. And if you can't see it very well, I will also add um, a picture at the end of the episode to show it better, but I really love this. It's really coming out really nice and squishy, super soft. Love the yarn and uh, yeah, what could be better? Erica's pattern and Danny's yarn, just both a perfect match for some Severus Snape socks. So that's what I was taking to work to hopefully work on at lunch hours. Um, but I haven't got a lot accomplished over the last couple weeks. Hopefully um, that will um, resolve and I'll be able to find more time to work on those in the next little while. But there's no deadline for those so that I'm not in any rush to get those done. So that was my uh, first project that I've been working on. Also when I get home in the evenings I've been trying to uh, work more on my Weasley sweater. So that's the other um, work that you've seen before and um, because it's so large I don't bother taking this one to work and the pattern that I'm using is from the Charmed Knits book by Allison Hansel and I noticed also on Ravelry um, the Weasley sweater is also a free pattern on Ravelry so if you don't have this book you can certainly uh, find it on Ravelry. There has been thousands of sweet, uh, Weasley sweaters 
created. So it's great seeing everybody's interpretation of it in all the different colors and all the different initials and different uh, ways that people have been um, doing their initials on their sweaters. So um, over the last couple of days I was finally finished the back. So it's not very exciting to see. It's just a rectangle. Um, but the last time you saw it, I was up to that stitch marker. So again, I've got the whole back done. It seems really big, but this is an oversized sweater. I am making it in a, an extra large size so that it can be really roomy and comfy. It's meant to be an oversized sweater. So now that the back is done, I can uh, start the front. And when I do that, I'm going to duplicate stitch the M on the front. So I won't be doing that until the very end. So yeah, um, so it's coming along. Um, but again, there's no tearing rush for this. Um, I am going to enter it into the pen hook and needles sweater shawl along with the uh, very kind Marlisha and Talia uh, over there at pen hook and needles. So um, yeah, I definitely won't get it done by the end of the month, but at least they accept works in progress. So I'll have to add another uh, work in progress picture to their knit along and uh, and enter it over there. So um, that's the second of three knitting projects that are currently on the needles. So the last knitting project that I have to share with you this week is a new project that I just got on the needles on March the 1st, but I've been working at quite a bit. So I've got a fair amount done already on it. Um, it is a project that I wanted to do for the Harry Potter House Cup group over on Ravelry. And you've heard me mention this before that um, we do knitting projects and submit them to classes. And the different classes have criteria each month for what they want to uh, see you do. So one of the classes over there is uh, asking you to do something that you've done before. So this was great because a few months ago, I um, went over to Michael's when they were having a sale on Lion Brand yarn and picked up some more yarn that I used the same type of the same colors uh, for a blanket throw uh, back in 2014 that I use on our couch in the living room. So what I thought I would do is make a similar blanket throw for our uh, chair in the living room as well. So this was perfect. Um, also over on the Harry Potter uh, House Cup group in Gryffindor House, I'm on what's called the Marauders Missions group for our little um, subgroup in within Gryffindor. And uh, in that group, um, they've asked us for March to do a project um, that is something for the house. So this met both criteria, so it's it's been a perfect project to, to do for March. So uh, it's a very simple project. Back in 2014, I had a um, brown and oatmeal color of the Lion Brand Thick and Quick yarn and basically just made up a pattern um, using very large needles, so it went really quickly. And I called it on my project pages, it's called the Game of Thrones Throw. And I had called it that because I had knit it all the way through a Game of Thrones marathon that Hubby and I were watching. Um, I believe it was to catch up uh, before the new season started that year. So it was a fairly large blanket but went really, really quickly. And I really loved the way it looks on our couch, so I thought making a matching one for the chair in the living room was perfect. So um, a little while ago Michaels had a sale on the Lion Brand yarn. I believe if you bought three skeins you got one free and also they were giving away Lion Brand um, totes. So this is perfect because it's holding all of this all of this yarn. Uh, I ended up getting three of one color and two of the other, which is perfect for this blanket. So just try to get it out here. It's been going so quickly. It's um, been a perfect project to do in the evenings as well. So all I did was I cast on 110 stitches using size 13 needles. 
and it's basically just a two row repeat of a uh, knit one purl three on one side and then a purl one knit three on the other and it uh, really has a nice pattern to it. So the yarn that I'm using is Woolies Thick and Quick. This is the gray marble. So I have two of these. And then uh, this is barley. And I have six of these. So eight skeins in total. Uh, and I'm pr almost halfway already done. Um, it goes so quickly when you're using size 13 needles. Uh, I got these clover needles way back when I first started learning how to knit probably for this project that I started doing in 2014 is, which is um, just when I did um, start knitting again in earnest. So uh, yeah, it's going along very quickly. I'm doing the same pattern. Here I'll show you a picture of what the blanket on our couch looks like so you have an idea of what it will look like on the in, when it's finished. And um, this is what I've got done so far. So obviously it's um, pulled up tight on the needles. It's going to be about the same size, a little bit shorter than the uh, couch one, but it's put on the couch sideways. So obviously just for a chair, it should fit just fine. So what I did was when I went back to the couch, I didn't write down in my instructions for my, or my project description for the first one, how many rows I had done for each section. So I went and, and um, checked out my previous project and wrote down how many rows, when to do the color change for the striping so that I could match it up. So it was very easy to do. So yeah, um, just a few more rows and I'll be exactly 50% done already. So this is a, a very big and heavy project. Every time I'm working on it in the living room, sitting in my chair when we're watching TV in the evenings, Tawny is there curled up with me. She loves to curl up in this as I'm knitting on it. So the longer it gets, the better she's liking it too. So yeah, so that's been a lot of fun. So I have just a few weeks to get that finished until uh, March 31st to have it submitted for both my class and my uh, Marauders missions over at the uh, Harry Potter House Cup. So that's been a lot of fun and it's great how um, a project that I wanted to do fits into uh, the criteria over there too. It's been, it's been great being in that group. It really does motivate you um, to um, think of new projects and, and get them done, get them completed. So, um, yes, I think that's all the knitting that I have to share with you uh, this episode. Um, I also, over the last uh, little while, got my spinning wheel out again. Well, it's always been out, but actually used. I had to dust it off and um, put the band back on it because it had been, um, uh, it been the last time I had used it was for plying. So the, the um, drive band was um, for the plying mode, which is reverse. If you do spinning on a spinning wheel, you'll know that you have to reverse your drive band to ply opposite to what you spin. So it was nice getting it oiled up again and in use again and I find it so relaxing to spin. Um, it's been wonderful to get back to that. I think the last time I got the spinning wheel out was um, for the Tour de Fleece. So it's been many months since I, uh, since I got the fiber out. So what I did was um, I had some fiber that I had purchased, just a small one to get started and back in the groove again because it took a while to kind of get back into it again. Um, this was some fiber, some 50% merino and 50% bamboo um, that I got over um, at the Manitoba Fiber Festival this fall I believe from Studio 563 was where I got the fiber from. And it ended up being about 100 yards of a two ply. This was um, 3.6 ounces of uh, fiber. And it's quite thick and thin, um, but still very, very soft. I really love the look of hand spun. And uh, I'm really gonna have to make something out of, I've got a whole now big bowl of hand spun that I've, um, made up but I haven't knit up yet so I really do have to get on the ball and, and 
find a good project to to um, use my hand spun for because it is it has a characteristic so different than um, commercially spun yarn but that was a lot of fun to to get the wheel out again but what I've been um, most consumed with the last couple of weeks is um, watching more YouTube videos and practicing making some more um, uh, polymer clay miniatures. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to get back into sculpting and painting. Um, so I think it kind of um, solves my urge of uh, wanting to paint and sculpt and being on a smaller scale, something that I have more time to do right now while I'm still working full time. Then, uh, you know, maybe later when I retire, I'll have more time to do larger projects for painting and sculpting. But for now, having these little miniatures to do um, really has been a lot of fun. So um, there are three things that I wanted to share with you this week. Um, the first one is um, just um, it's it's just an experiment that I wanted to do. I, I was watching um, some episodes of um, Sugar Charm Shop. She is just an incredible artist, and you can tell in her sculptures she, so realistic food that she creates. I'll link her. Uh, videos in the notes um, but she had a really interesting method of creating a very realistic lettuce and um, cabbage and I really wanted to try it uh, so um, what I'll show you here first some of the methods on, on what you do polymer clay um, I use uh, mostly Sculpey and uh, there are different kinds that you can get at Michael's um, here, I guess in the States, probably be available um, at other craft stores like Hobby Lobby. Um, but we just have Michael's up here. And um, what you do is you get this um, uh, polymer clay. It doesn't dry out in the air because it's a plastic base. Um, I have a lot of just the white Sculpey but I've been gradually collecting the small squares of different colors as well. So um, this technique was using um, a press mold, which I hadn't done before. So I thought it really looked interesting. And it also uh, involved making what they call a cane. And uh, so in the last little while, um, I've been investing in some other tools for sculpting. One of them being a craft version of a pasta maker and um, they have them at Michael's and of course I waited until that 55% coupon was out again and got myself uh, one of these machines that you can roll out sheets of polymer clay on and it's great for um, blending colors and what you do is you blend colors into kind of a roll and then cut that roll and uh, then you can use it for different projects and one of the ones that um, this lady on um, the Sugar Charm shop was showing was how to do lettuce leaves. And you get a cane of different colors of or different shades of green going from the lightest to the darkest and then pressing them into a mold. So at first she um, showed how to make the mold. So at first you just um, create just a um, in a piece of polymer clay an outline and the veins of a leaf. And then you bake that so that it's hard. And then you press that into some other clay that hasn't been baked yet to get a negative of that so that you have both of these. You uh, bake them both so that you have both sides of a leaf, both a negative and a positive. And then from those, you make a mold. And you, if you've been here before, you've seen me make molds for my Harry Potter charms. And so you make a mold of the positive and negative as well. And these molds, they've been dusted with cornstarch so that it releases the polymer clay very easily. I'll show pictures at the end of while I was doing this process so that you can see uh, how I was doing it. But again, this mold materials, this um, easy mold, I believe it's called, um, really works so quickly 
you just press the when you're making the mold you just press it in here and let it sit for about 25 minutes take out your master and then you have your mold so now what you can do with this two-part mold is um, take your polymer clay and uh, press it between it and it really gives a wonderful um, textured leaf and you take those leaves and put them together kind of like making a rose for this project at least and you can make a little head of lettuce so this was my little lettuce leaf project that I was trying out that's my first attempt so you can see the different shades of green in there are um, achieved by rolling out that uh, clay with the different layers of shades of green so that was a lot of fun to to try and I'm really pleased with the results and um, it's basically just teaching me different techniques and it's funny because when I showed hubby I was so you know so happy with this and I thought oh cool it looks like you know it looks like lettuce and so he said oh yeah that's really neat he said but um, what's it for and I said well it's just for fun and that's basically very true of of all hobbies I think at least mine um, it's just for fun um, I'm not looking to create a Etsy shop or anything like that um, basically it just fulfills that creative desire I think um, and I just like to see well when you see something else being made you think well maybe I can do that too so um, yeah uh, with the tutorials all, all the information that you can get on YouTube and that it's just so much fun to to try your hand at it so um, yeah that's the first of three things that I tried over the last couple of weeks so I thought that was really cool she also does such neat hamburgers and sandwiches and things like that and puts lettuce in them and it looks so realistic it's just so very neat so so that was the first one that I wanted to share with you the um, second technique that I wanted to try using polymer clay was making a fruit cane and it's very similar to how I explained how to do the lettuce leaf with the different shades of green rolled up into a, a long tube um, but this time I wanted to make a, um, a cane of um, a fruit uh, either you can do lime lemon a very popular um, oranges that kind of thing so that when you slice them it actually looks like sliced fruit so um, this project started out now you start out making your cane with kind of a like a puck sized um, block of polymer clay that you uh, cut into eighths and then you wrap other uh, layers of polymer clay around it so you end up like a puck looking um, shape of clay and then you gradually roll that down and it's called um, compressing I think um, you 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 press it down and roll it until it becomes um, a really small cane and then when you cut that cane uh, when you slice it it actually looks like sliced fruit and this one is supposed to look like uh, a sliced um, lime and what's neat about this is the inside colors that you make up um, you can um, put together your colors with also a special um, polymer clay that's translucent and it really does look like the inside of either a lime lemon or orange translucent clay is very popular for a lot of items to make the food look um, even more realistic so I did a few canes of that um, made them really um, very very small and then I wanted to make something using those canes um, so what I thought I would do is um, a, lamp, a lime pie so the last time I made a pie I started out by using a bottle cap and that was a good size to make um, a little tiny miniature pie pan so this time what I did was I bent out the bottle cap a little bit more and uh, decided to use it to make a mold and using that mold I uh, layered it with uh, the polymer clay 
for the pie crust. And then again, using the translucent clay and some green, I made the filling and then did the top with kind of a, um, a meringue topping for the, for the pie. And then used um, slices of that cane that I had made earlier for uh, lime slices for the top of the, it's almost like a key lime pie or, or a lime meringue pie. So here's my next little miniature that I was having fun um, creating over the last couple of weeks, my little um, lime pie. So again, you see a lot of these on YouTube, um, a lot of Etsy sellers um, will take just the individual lime slices or the pie slices and put a, um, a, a eye pin in there and uh, use them as charms. See a lot of pie charms. Um, but these, I'm still just kind of playing around and seeing uh, how it goes. Uh, so I thought I would just do the one slice and then the rest of the pie and uh, uh, just glued it down on a piece of wood that I stained up. So yeah, it's uh, just, I don't know, um, just a fun little hobby to, uh, to, like I say, get those creative urges for painting and sculpting um, out there. But the last one that I have to share with you this week is one that I had so much fun doing. After doing the lime, I thought I wanted to do some other um, fruits or vegetables. So what I thought I would do is um, a little still life uh, sculpture of fruit. So um, I started out by doing a couple of different fruits and then I thought, well, I need a little bowl. So I even used the polymer clay to um, create a little bowl and then painted it up to make it look like a wooden bowl and then filled that with uh, a bunch of different fruits that um, I had used both the tutorials online to learn how to do and then just some that I uh, made up myself. So that's the third one that I was having so much fun doing the last couple of weeks and that's my little still life fruit bowl. And as you can see there, um, I started out with I believe, doing the grapes and again using the green translucent um, clay really works to make them look a lot more realistic. And then I did a few different styles of apples and then a grapefruit and then an orange. And those are just solid throughout. I didn't cut open any of them to make them out of canes. You can do that as well with the canes. You can close up, you can cut a little piece and then close up the sides and then cut them so that when you open it up, it looks realistic inside. And I may do that in the future um, with maybe some limes or lemons or oranges. Um, then I also um, did some bananas. So I did three of those and put them in there. And then when I put them in the bowl, I thought, well, I needed something small to kind of fill in a few of the gaps. So uh, just a couple of days ago, I did little raspberries. And I tell you, that's probably the smallest, even though it's miniature, the raspberries were even smaller. And as I was making them, I was getting them smaller and smaller as I was doing them. So that was a lot of fun to, to do. But each one of those little berries on the raspberry, you roll out and individually put on each one of them. So I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It was just so much fun to do. Um, yeah, I'm really happy the way they turned out. And um, let's see what else I can tell you about it. I guess not too much. It's just fun to you know I can put it on my shelf and say, yeah, I made that. Uh, but it really reminded me when I first got my digital drawing pad quite a few years ago. I think the first thing that I ever drew was a still life of some um, some fruit. So maybe I'll pop in a picture here of that that I did quite a few years ago. So I'll have to think of something else now to make. Um, what I'd like to try next is maybe some bakery items like maybe some croissants or uh, different breads. That's really interesting to me to um, to try to do. So yeah, it's it's been great having um, this kind of crafting to do something you can do in just a couple of hours, and uh, it doesn't take a lot of um, um, equipment uh, to do. And uh, yeah, I've been having so much fun 
uh, creating it. I glued everything down and then uh, glazed it all with Varathane as well. And I believe the raspberries I also used glossy accents on to make them um, a little a little more realistic. So I hope you enjoy seeing that. And maybe if you um, you know want to try some polymer clay um, sculpting, um, there are so many. Um, tutorials on YouTube and not just for food obviously um, I mean everything is made for like miniature doll houses from furniture to household items appliances um, everything you can think of even dolls making redoing dolls and that kind of thing really interesting and there are so many wonderful artists out there um, it's been a lot of fun um, watching those as well so, um, yeah, that's what I've been up to over the last little while. Um, so I guess in a couple of weeks time, I'll, I'll come back and um, we'll see what else I've been up to. Hopefully I'll have uh, my blanket done and get some more done on my Weasley sweater. And hopefully work will settle down that I can get some more work done on my socks. And uh, we'll do some more drawings for the Harry Potter cow. Uh, in a couple of weeks time as well. So until then, I think that's all I have to share with you. Thank you again, everyone, for coming by to visit. I hope you enjoyed seeing it, uh, you know, what I had to share. And I hope I've inspired you to do something um, just for fun and uh, enjoy creating. So we'll see you again in two weeks time. And uh, as usual, I'll pop in a few pictures at the end here. Um, over the last couple of weeks, um, especially some of the steps that I did uh, when I was creating some of these uh, miniature polymer clay uh, sculptures. So thank you so much for visiting with me in my studio, and I hope you'll return again in two weeks' time uh, to visit with me in the studio once more. So until then, goodbye everybody, and have a great couple of weeks. So long.